Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we're talking about how to get to know God intimately. And of course, in doing so, we've been talking about God from different perspectives, having to do with redemption, and of course, the unique attributes of God. But now we're talking about faith. And of course, Hebrews 11, 6 tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Must, but you must believe that he is. You have to believe he exists, even though you can't see him. And so the only way you can walk with God is by faith. That's the only way you can walk with him. And so it's important that we learn to walk by faith. Now, we don't have any problem walking in this physical dimension because we can feel, taste, touch, and hear everything. But in the spiritual realm, you can't walk in the spiritual realm with your feelings. Now, some people are always waiting for a feeling. I just, you know, feel I can feel the presence of God, you know, that like uh, like just you could put a knife through it or whatever and but that may happen on occasion but not but that's but not always the primary we walk with god is by faith all right so then we've been talking about different aspects of faith so far defining it and talking about different things but now we're we're talking about faith and obedience and so there's another little element that we are are we are putting in here and we left off last time talking about we are to be imitators of God Ephesians 5 and verse 1 tells us be imitators of God even as dear children well isn't it interesting you know we as our children as children primarily we end up imitating our father or imitating our mother and so God wants us as his children to imitate him now, if we'll do, now now in the spiritual realm, now it's not always true in the physical realm, you know, unfortunately, you can't always uh, imitate your earthly father because that could take you to prison like he went to prison or something like that. But our heavenly father is a God of love and, he's, and as love, he is interested in our best interest at all times. So if we'll learn to imitate God, then we'll, we'll learn to live our life, our life properly and we'll end up in heaven and not miss heaven and go to hell. So it's important that we imitate him. Well, if you can't see God, how can you imitate him? Well, it's primarily through his word, but also remember that God took on the form of a human being, literally in every respect, through Jesus Christ, and he literally walked on this earth for 33 years. The last three years of his life was in the ministry, and of course, we have his words recorded in the scriptures, which is the inspired word of God. And Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So as we see Jesus through the words that he spoke in the scriptures, then we are seeing the Father because they're one and the same. So we imitate Jesus. We imitate God. All right. Now, we see in Deuteronomy 30 that we are to be imitators of God. We, we are to, in other words, in Deuteronomy 30, we are to... Uh, we are to confess the word of God and it has to come from our heart. Our heart has to agree with our mouth. And we know in Amos 3, 3, it says, how can two walk together except they be agreed? So our mouth and our heart must be in agreement with God and his heart. Otherwise, we can't walk together with God. And then in Romans chapter 10 and beginning with verse 8, it said, what does it say? It is, what does it say? The word is near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, remember now, that's your innermost being, the heart of the human spirit. If, you, if you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he's raised from the dead, that Jesus is raised from the dead, then you'll be saved. And with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. All right. So again, our heart and our mouth have to be in agreement with God's mouth and God's heart. All right. And then we have Galatians 5 and 16. And faith worketh by uh, uh, obedience. It also worketh by love. But it says in James 2, 26, faith without works or obedience is dead. So faith worketh by love, but also faith without works or obedience is dead. All right, so we must obey. Now when we talk about obedience, you know, we're talking about God obeying. Oh, really? Since when does God Almighty have trouble obeying? Well, remember now, 
He took on the form of a human being literally in every respect when he came in onto this earth in the form of a sinless man, Jesus. And Jesus had to obey God all through his life and through his ministry. He meditated on the word, he loved the word, and he obeyed the word. And even down into the Garden of Eden, he was tempted to disobey. Remember, disobedience is sin, and obedience is holiness. And he was tempted in the Garden. Remember, he was, ble he was bleeding blood. It was coming out of his, uh, his skin. And of course, it was because of, the, of what he was confronted with. And we found out in Hebrews chapter 5, in the last part of verse 7 in the Amplified Bible, that it was the horror of him being separated from God the Father, because he'd never, ever been separated from the Godhead throughout eternity. He's always existed. But now as a man, he's going to be separated from God's presence. And as God taking on the form of a man. And so uh, that was, uh, the physical death was nothing. That's just your body returning to dust. But as a human spirit now, he would be separated from God. And as we already learned quite from the scriptures, that he would literally pay the death penalty for your sins and my sins. And he literally is going to now, be, be when he was crucified the next day, and our sins would be laid upon him, then he would die spiritually. And then he would descend into hell. For three days and three nights, he went into hell so we wouldn't have to go to hell. He suffered the wrath and judgment of God in hell so we wouldn't have to suffer the wrath and judgment of God. He suffered the wrath of God and judgment for us. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. But had he, he said there, right there in that passage of scriptures in the Garden of Gethsemane, in the, in the Gospel of Luke, and he said, if it is your will, let this cup depart from me. But now, nevertheless, let your will be done. Now, if we already learned that when a, this thought of disobeying and not going through with it would be a sin. But remember, when the thought comes, if you cast it down right away, then you haven't sinned. But if you take that thought and you actually see yourself doing it and disobeying and not going through with the crucifixion and the death, then that would have been sin. And of course, in this case, God took on the form of a man. If Jesus would have disobeyed, that would be like God disobeying. And then God would have become unholy. And then, of course, uh, he would have ceased being God. Heaven would have ceased to exist and everything would fall apart, and Satan would have his victory. But glory to God, Jesus obeyed. He said, he cast that thought down right away, and he said, nevertheless, your will be done, not my will. Praise be to God, and he went through with it. And because of his obedience, now it's possible, and, and he's made it possible for all of mankind, if they desire, he suffered the death, uh, the, the, the punishment of sin for mankind, and now we can receive that, uh, that freedom from that freedom from sin by receiving this gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. And of course, uh, upon his death, burial, and resurrection, the resurrection is important. Remember, you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, he's raised from the dead. And he was raised from the dead, sinless. So the power of sin, death, and Satan was broken. The law, the fullness, the law had been fulfilled to the T, and now. Satan was defeated. So that's why it's so important to believe that he's raised from the dead. All right. So if we believe that, then we ask, and, and we ask Jesus to come into your heart, we confess with our mouth and believe in your heart that he's raised from the dead, then you'll be saved. For with the heart, one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Now that's what it means to be born again. And if you'll do that, then you'll be taken from the power of darkness, according to Colossians 1, 13, and transferred to the kingdom of the Son of His love as a born-again, regenerated human spirit. Now you no longer have the nature of sin or Satan, but now you have the nature of God, the nature of holiness and love and righteousness. Praise be to God. Isn't that great? I'll tell you, we have so much to be thankful for. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for providing redemption for all of mankind including us, those, of course, who have already asked Jesus into their heart. Well, our time is up. Until next time, may you be blessed in everything that you set your hands to do. Glory to God.